Hello everyone, and welcome to this short video in which we're going to take a look at how NetScout's Arbor Edge Defense can be used as the first and last line of cyber defense for your organization. Arbor Edge Defense is a well-established product that's been used for many years to protect enterprises against various cyber threats, and its specific capabilities for blocking malware and probing attacks are what we're going to focus on today. The Arbor Edge Defense Unit is typically placed right at the edge of the enterprise, just south of the service provider handoff by router or ethernet. And while this is important for the protection of stateful devices like firewalls, load balancers, IPS and IDS, etc., it's also a prime location for blocking of incoming and outgoing threats. Arbor Edge Defense is designed from the ground up to be stateless, and that's very important when guarding against DDoS attacks. But more importantly for the purposes of today's discussion, this means that it is uniquely suited for the commodity blocking of stateless indicators of compromise. When combined with NetScout's proprietary AIF feed, or third-party Stix taxi feeds, AED is able to detect indicators of compromise, whether they're incoming or outgoing, and instantly block them. This stateless commodity blocking is able to take a lot of load off the firewall, and although many firewalls do have very sophisticated malware detection algorithms and capabilities, AED's stateless blocking can be very complementary to this, in that it will take care of the simpler stateless blocking, removing a lot of load from the firewall, and enabling it to focus on its more complex activities, and in many cases, removing the need in the firewall for additional processing power or more expensive licensing. Based on its position in the network, not only is AED going to be seeing inbound activity such as scanning or reconnaissance, but also any outbound threats that have been missed by the rest of the security stack. A good example of this would be command and control traffic. A user in the organization clicks on a bad link and gets their computer infected with malware. The first thing that that malware does is phone home to a command and control server somewhere on the internet. The CNC server would typically respond with instructions on what to do next perhaps to download some more advanced malware or a rootkit that would enable the attacker to get full access to that computer and form a bridgehead into the rest of the organization. With AED's outbound blocking, that initial phone home to the command and control server is blocked and the malware is left dormant and is no longer any kind of threat. And of course, as a security-focused device, AED has all of the necessary interfaces to integrate into the rest of the ecosystem including support for various types of syslog events and a comprehensive REST API. So let's take a look at what this actually looks like in practice. Here we have the summary screen of our AED demo system. And if we scroll down, we can see exactly what's going on with regards to inbound and outbound blocking. We see information not only for our NetScout proprietary AIF feed, but also for third-party Stix taxi feeds. And as you can see, we have a number of listed categories for IOCs that we found here. If we click through on one of them, in this case location-based threats in inbound blocking, we can take a look at more detail. This will navigate us to the blocked hosts log, with filtering set up to show that specific class of threat. Here we can see a couple of entries, and for each of those entries additional information is available by clicking on the details button. We can see that this particular host was blocked because it was attempting a Telnet brute force attack, obviously something that we don't want to allow. Similarly, this other host has been labeled as a Tor exit node. Tor, or the Onion Router, is generally used to hide the identities of both legitimate users and bad actors, and for that reason, it's quite often used as a reconnaissance tool for probing or scanning. Again, something we want to be aware of, especially if we have policies forbidding Tor on our network. Back on our summary screen, we can also take a look at outbound threats that have been blocked. Whilst inbound threats generally relate to reconnaissance and scanning, outbound threats are usually a lot more serious, and can indicate malware or other dangerous software on the network. And in the case of AED, the fact that we blocked it means that it was missed by every other device in the security stack, making AED the last line of defense. Again, we have several different categories here. Campaigns and targeted attacks, command and control, and DDoS reputation. Let's take a look at the various IOCs in more detail to see what we find. Under campaigns and targeted attacks, we found an instance of NJRAT. NJRAT is a remote access Trojan, which among other things is able to steal credentials, log keystrokes, 
and grab files. Remote access Trojans are often indicators of a more involved campaign that may have affected your enterprise, and the scope of infection may go far beyond this particular host that we're looking at. Under Command and Control, we find evidence of a TrickBot infestation. TrickBot is a modular banker Trojan, and its main objective is to steal banking credentials by injecting malicious code into a web browser running on an infected device. TrickBot has also been used in recent ransomware campaigns as the delivery mechanism for the ransomware binaries. And finally, under DDoS Reputation, we found evidence of the Mirai bot. Mirai is malware that likes to compromise IoT devices such as cameras, and is used primarily for DDoS attacks against people outside of the enterprise that it currently infests. However, collateral damage from a number of Mirai bots within an enterprise can easily cause problems such as exhaustion of outbound bandwidth and problems with a firewall due to the outbound packet rate. So again, something that needs to be found and remediated. AED is also able to consume indicators of compromise through third-party STIX feeds. And here in the separate STIX frame, you can see that we've had a hit under cybercrime URIs. And once again, we're able to get information on the host that was blocked and the associated policy. The AIF feed that you've seen in action here is NetScout's proprietary and highly curated threat feed produced and maintained by our ACERT team, who do a combination of original research and collaboration with other security groups. The feed itself tracks individual campaigns and gives every IOC a confidence score that can degrade over time. So that if, for instance, one of the IP addresses is reallocated from one of the attackers to a benign third party, over time, as no suspicious activity is seen from that IP address, its confidence will degrade to prevent overblocking of the legitimate user of that address. That's about all we have time to cover now, but we've shown how Arbor Edge Defense can be your first and last line of cyber defense. Its stateless and high performance reputation based blocking is able to stop a compromise from becoming a full on breach, and with its unique position on the network, is able to identify all the threats that your existing security stack has missed. Thank you very much for listening.